Hello friends, welcome to Oracle concept video series. So in this video, we are going to learn about what is read only tables in Oracle. So in few scenarios, we want to protect the data of a table or in some scenarios, we don't want anyone to change the existing data of a table. Specifically, every project will have few master tables, which we don't want anyone to go and alter the data of the table. And in some specific scenario, we want to allow only an insert or we want to allow only update. Probably we may want to block the insert or delete. So for these kind of scenarios, what are all the options available in Oracle? That is what we are going to see in today's video. So here is a very simple and easiest option. In fact, I'm going to show you four different methods of implementing the same functionality. Probably you can pick and choose whatever fits right for your technical requirement. So here is the first method of implementation. Very simple and very easy to implement. So let us see how to implement using the first method. So I'm creating a table called employee with three column employee number, e name and salary. And I'm populating two records into this table, employee number one and employee number two, and I'm committing the data. So from this point, I don't want anyone else to change the data of this table. So the easiest option is to make this table read only to convert this table into a read only. The easiest option is to alter this table and say this is a read only table. So here is the statement. So you say alter table table name read only by specifying this read only keyword. We are instructing Oracle to make this table a read only table. So from this point, any insert or update or deletion on this table will throw an error. So whenever someone try to insert after this point, they will get an error saying that update operation not allowed on this table. Probably after some time, we may want to populate few more record into this table. And again, we want to convert this table into a read only table to make this read only table into an editable table. We need to execute another DDL statement called alter table table name read write. So the key learning here is two keywords. One is read only keyword, which makes the table a read only table. The read write keyword, which makes the table enabled for editing so that we will be able to do DML operation. Let's see a simple demo for this. I'm just dropping the table. I'm creating the employee table and I'm populating two set of records into this table and I've just committed the data. So now let us make this table a read only table. So alter table employee, you say read only. So now the table becomes a read only table. So from this point, any insert or update on this table will throw an error. So let us try to insert one more employee into this uh, table. Let's say Kevin salary as 3000. So now you will get an error saying that update operation not allowed. It is applicable for all insert, update and delete. So let me try to delete the employees from this table. Delete from EMP. So you'll get an error saying that update operation not allowed. Fine. So this is the first method of implementation. Now let us see one more method of implementation. But before that, this option of making a table read only using read only keyword are enabling the table using read write keyword is available from 11G release one only because this is a new feature introduced from 11G release one. So in the prior version, there are a few alternative ways to implement. That's what we are going to see in the next example. So what we are going to do is, so whenever you want to protect such information or whenever you want to make it uh, data available as a read only data to any users, you create all those tables into completely a different schema and then give a select privilege to the schema. For example, all the users are connected to user B means what we can do is we can create all our read only tables into another schema called user A schema and then we can give a privilege that is a select only privilege. I'm not going to give an insert or update or delete privilege here. I'm giving only the select on this particular table to user B. So once we have given the select on privilege, so user B will be able to access the same table by specifying user A dot employee so that they will be able to access the data. But whenever user B tries to either do insert or update or delete on this table, they will get an error saying that insufficient privileges because 
right now the user b has access only for reading the data from user a let's see a small demo for this so now i have connected to two users one is like user a and in the right side you can see i have connected to another user called user b so in user a i'm dropping and creating the table employee and i'm just populating the same informations like two set of employees then i am saying grant select on employee to user underscore b so i've just given the grant privilege to user b so now from user b we will be able to select the data from user a let's say user a dot emp so now we are actually accessing the table which is created in the user a and from user a we have given only the select privilege so when i'm trying to insert a data let's say insert into same table values of let's say 3 comma kevin comma 3000 so we will get an error saying that insufficient privilege because we don't have a privilege to either insert or update or delete so this is the second method of implementation so let us see one more method of implementation in fact the third method is quite similar to the second method but this method will be very helpful whenever i want to restrict few records before giving an access to another set of user for example my table has like 100 records but i want to give an access only to 50 records so in that case what we can do we can create a view on top of this table and instead of giving the grant for the table to another user you can give a grant to the view so in this case i am creating a view which will restrict the number of record for example in this case I have two records in the employee table but the view is going to display only one record because I just put a var condition here and I am giving the privilege the select privilege on the view to the user b so now what will happen the user b will be able to select the view so that they will be able to see the restricted rows on top of that we are giving only the select privilege so user b will not be able to do any dml operation whenever they are trying to do a dml operation on this simple view they will get an insufficient privilege in fact this can be slightly modified implemented by using a read only view also in fact the read only view i have already covered in a separate video the link of that video i'll give in the description fine now let us see a simple demo for this example i'm dropping the table i'm just creating the employee table i just populated few set of records into this table now what I'm going to create is a simple view. Let's say create or replace employee v as select star from employee where employee number in one. Okay, I just created a simple view. Sorry, view keyword is missing. Yeah, view is created. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a select privilege for this view to employee b grant select on this view to user b so we have granted the information so instead of employee table now i am accessing the uh, view so this method will be very helpful whenever you want to restrict few set of records or for different users you want to expose different set of records on top of that you want to enforce few restrictions like who can do what kind of dml operation in that aspect you can use this view based approach so anyway we have given only the select privilege on the view so obviously we will not be able to do any dml operation through this simple view other option is you can use the read only view also okay now let us move ahead with the next set of example so in fact here i am going to use the uh, trigger to restrict the dml operation to enforce the same read only functionality so i'm creating the table and i'm just populating two records then what i'm doing i'm actually creating a trigger and then i am saying whenever you do any insert or update or delete you raise an exception from the trigger so i'm using the raise application error function in fact i have covered this raise application error in an exception related video the link of that video i'll give in the description the main usage of this method is if you want to restrict only insert or if you want to restrict only delete then this will be very helpful 
so based on a condition for example i want to delete only if an employee is resigned or i want to allow the update only if the salary is less than 5000 so for all our conditional based restrictions we can use the view based approach now let me show you the small demo for this so i've just dropped the employee table i'm recreating the employee table i'm populating two employees into this table and i've committed the transaction now i'm creating the trigger so now the trigger is created such a way that it will block all the insert or update or delete operation so now let me try to insert a record now if you see when you are trying to do a dml operation or insert operation you will get an error saying the dml operation not allowed because this is the exception we raised from the body of the trigger so actually we have seen like four different implementation one using a read only keyword remaining two methods using the view and and the grant uh, that is the data control language command and the fourth method is using a trigger so based on our requirement we can pick and choose whatever best suits for that functionality okay just now we have seen about read only table a very similar concept is available called read only table space uh, probably i'll cover this read only table space in a next set of video if you have any questions you post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id but before that you can check whether a similar question has already been posted as part of the subscriber question series or as part of the interview question series if you are not able to find your question here please write back to me i'll be happy to record and post as a new video if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question sql practical question and concept videos and thanks a lot for watching this video